I bought this Wi-Fi guard because apparently my Wi-Fi is Woo! dangerous. Wait, what? Break it down now, phone, gadget, apps, it's the techie, techie guy, yeah. Is our Wi-Fi really dangerous or is this some sort of conspiracy theory scam that plays on our fears? Okay, without getting all sciencey, we obviously know that Wi-Fi uses invisible radio waves which provide our network connectivity. These waves are a form of radio frequency radiation or EMFs and we know that radiation is bad for us. Ever been to a dentist to take an x-ray and everybody <laughs> evacuates the room? Well, turns out that there are actually two types of EMF radiation. There is ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing radiation is high level radiation in things like UV rays and X-rays that have potential to cause cellular and DNA issues. Non-ionizing EMFs is low level radiation which is generally considered as safe. This is found in our computer screens, remote controls, radio and TV signals and of course Wi-Fi whose frequency is around 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. Okay, sure, so Wi-Fi falls into the non-ionizing EMFs and therefore it's safe, right? Well, uh, yes and kind of no. I have this Trifield TF2 EMF tester and I'm going to show you the kind of EMFs that my Wi-Fi is spreading around my home. So the manual says that absolute safe levels have not been established, which is kind of weird. But it also says that RF for you needs to be stay around 0.2 milliwatts per meter square and 1 milliwatt per meter square. Okay, so with that in mind, um, let's go see what kind of a test we get. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. So switch the Trifield meter on to radio frequency and you can see how the signal is pulsing. That is expected because that's how um, Wi-Fi and cell phone signals kind of work. The number I'm interested in is the top left hand side, which is the peak. Remember, that needs to be under one. This is clearly way above one. And the big numbers at the bottom are the field measurement, which is kind of what's happening right now. As we get closer to the source, it's so high that it actually stop reading. Now, uh, that's kind of expected. So let's see what happens when I take a couple of steps back, see whether that starts to drop. This is a typical office setup. You have your router in one place, you have your dog toys all over the floor, and then you've got your desk right next to this. Okay, as I'm working further back, you can see that the signal starts to drop, but it's still peaking at around one, six, seven. It's very inconsistent. It's a bit all over the place. Uh, it seems a bit high though. So I've got this big monitor. Let's try go above this monitor. Okay, wow, you can see immediately it spikes right back up again. There's my router and all its messes. And yeah, this is off the charge. Bring it down below my big monitor. I'm getting some sort of shielding from that it's still a little bit high. Here's what it's supposed to look like. I take a couple of steps out of my office into the kitchen and well, you can see these are good healthy readings. So what does all this actually mean? Is Wi-Fi dangerous or is it not? Well, you would think by now that there would be a clear answer, but unfortunately there just isn't. You see, there are studies that show that prolonged exposure to non-ionizing EMF may actually be harmful. And then there are those studies that show that basically it isn't. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, which is a branch of the World Health Organization, labeled RF radiation, just like Wi-Fi, as a group 2B possible carcinogenic for humans. But then the UK Health Protection Agency conducted the largest, most comprehensive research at the time, they essentially looked at does radio Wi-Fi frequency actually have any impact on children? And this agency concluded that radio frequency exposure will well below the recommended maximum levels. And essentially they said that there is no reason why Wi-Fi should not continue to be used in schools and other places. You know, the list of studies for and against goes on. So we kind of left with a yes, no, maybe kind of situation. Is Wi-Fi dangerous? We're still not so sure. Okay, but before you reach for your tinfoil hat, let's look at this realistically. Look, there's no getting away from cell phone signals, radio, GPS, TV, public Wi-Fi, smart meters, power lines, and of course, Wi-Fi. It is literally all around us all the time. Now, the big key here is that distance is your friend. I mean, we obviously all remember the inverse square laws of physics from school, right? Okay, well, just in case you're not, let me remind you. Every time you double the distance of a radio wave, 
you get only a quarter of its energy. In other words, we want to put as much distance as possible between us and the source of the EMF. While our body can actually absorb EMF, what we don't want is prolonged exposure to EMF. So what do we do? Well, you can actually go overboard, go nuts and surround yourself with a Faraday material that blocks out everything all the time. Realistically, let's be honest, none of us are gonna pretty much do that, right? So the next solution is to get one of these um, Wi-Fi guards. I found a whole bunch on Amazon, which is supposedly supposed to reduce the EMF from the router. Let me put this to the test. I'm gonna show you a before and after and kind of see if this actually works at all. Okay, let's do a one-handed unboxing, which is always fun. This is the Wi-Fi guard. Link is, of course, in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Um, it's a, a bag of some type. Uh, I'm assuming the material is specially made to block out EMFs. Um, okay, let's switch on the tester. Stick it up to the radio frequency. And let's put the tester inside the bag to see what kind of reading I'm going to get. So... Peak is at 1.3, 1.4. Okay, this is looking really promising. I didn't have much hype for this, but this is looking pretty good. Let's do an after test. Let's take it out of the bag and see what kind of reading I get. Oh, okay, look at this. Immediately it jumps off to 6, 6.7. So, not bad at all. It's certainly performing better than I thought. Let's go to the router. Now, of course, this is going to jump through the roof again. And yep. Yeah, unreadable off the chart next step is to wrap the entire router in this and see what kind of reading we get okay so everything is now enclosed within the wi-fi guard and of course the readings are still going to be off the chart right next to the source of the emfs that's expected the big question is what does it do when i go back to my desk as i step over the dog please don't mind him um all right let's have a look at the readings well Okay, 9.3, 7, 8. Yeah, I, I'm really not seeing much of a, like this huge difference. Wi-Fi guard supposed to protect you for your EMF. I'm not so sure this is doing any of that. Seems like pretty much the same reason I was getting before. The problem is that whilst for EMF distance is your friend, for Wi-Fi signal strength, well, it's the opposite. You want to get as close as possible to the router in order to get the stronger signal. So I guess it's pretty much up to you to balance between the two. Now that we've done these tests, I'm kind of wondering, should I have my phone charging next to my bed at night? Let me know if you guys want to see that kind of videos. In the meantime, check out these videos on faster Wi-Fi and more tips and tricks. Hit the head below to subscribe if this is your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in those videos. Let's go.